The range of Ukrainian FPV drones has probably increased significantly. Russian occupiers have recorded their appearance more than 30 kilometers from the front line. A corresponding video was recently published by one of the Russian Z channels. The occupiers discovered an FPV drone with an extended flight range between the villages of Veliki Kopani and Tarasivka, which is in the occupied part of the Kherson region. This is more than 30 kilometers from the territories controlled by the defense forces of Ukraine. Here it is, the bird. So you can see, this is before reaching Kopani, from Tarasovka. They fly with things like this. And they fly there calmly, said the upset occupier. He showed such an intercepted drone. Judging by the footage, it is a UAV equipped with a projectile dropping system. Russian military observer Yen Matveyev commented on the situation on Telegram. He noted that this is not the first report from the Russian armed forces about Ukrainian FPV attack drones flying deep into the rear. We cannot rule out a sabotage and reconnaissance group looking into the rear. But in general, Russian channels have previously noted an increase in the flight range of Ukrainian FPVs. If they start flying stably at 30 kilometers or more, this will hit logistics harder than the explosion of the arsenal in Toropets, the expert said. It should be noted that both Ukraine and the Russian Federation often use FPV drones in war to destroy enemy manpower and equipment directly at the front line. These drones are quite compact and often have a short flight range, up to 10 to 15 kilometers, part of Kiev's strategy is targeting of military equipment, ammunition and infrastructure deep inside Russia, as well as making civilians feel some of the consequences of the war that is being fought largely inside Ukraine. So, Ukraine's long-range drone strike campaign has a number of goals. The most immediate objective is to undermine the Russian war machine by targeting military infrastructure and the country's economically vital energy industry. Strikes on Russian airfields have been credited with damaging a number of military planes used in the Kremlin's bombing campaign of Ukraine cities and civilian infrastructure. Meanwhile, Ukrainian officials believe the recent attack in Tver region destroyed significant quantities of Russian munitions including artillery shells and missiles. At this stage, Ukraine's bombing raids on Russian oil refineries remain on an insufficient scale to plunge the Kremlin's vast energy industry into crisis. However, Ukrainian drone attacks are frequently followed by media reports of decreased Russian refining capacity. Ну и вот, чтобы вы видели, это не доезжая до Капаней. Это за Капанями в сторону Тарасов. Ну, в сторону Тарасовки или от Тарасовки не да, доезжая да. до Капаней. Вот, в принципе, они вот с такими вот вещами летают. И уже спокойно долетают. Geolocated footage from October the 21st showed the Ukrainian armed forces advancing in the western part of Novoivanovka. At the same time, fighting continues in the Glushkovsky district. Russian war correspondents write that Ukrainian forces tried to break through the border with the Russian Federation in the area of Volfino. Moreover, the Ukrainian armed forces deployed reserves on the kruglenkoi nikolsky line. It was from this area that the mechanized attack by two companies began. In the area of Lyubimovka and Zeleny Shliak, there are units of the 106th Airborne Division and the 56th Airborne Regiment of Ukraine. It also became known that not long ago, the Russian Defense Ministry transferred the Black Wolves evacuation unit from the Bakhmut direction to the Kursk region. Units of the 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian Federation, the Arbat, Samat, Arkhangeli and Pyatnachka units are also operating in the Kursk region. Ramzan Kadyrov continues to claim that the Russian army is advancing slowly in the Kursk region due to the difficult direction. Thus, Alordinov, stated that the Kursk direction is currently the most difficult in the entire theater of military operations. Meanwhile, a group of drones attacked the microelectronics plant in the Bryansk region, Kremli L Group. The plant's CEO, Dantsev, said that his company is facing difficulties in purchasing spare parts for equipment repair. The drone attack damaged special power supply facilities. The Kremlin has given its military new deadlines, ordering the recapture of full control over the Kursk region by February the 1st, 2025. The original deadline of October the 15th has already passed without success.
According to a source within Ukraine's defense forces, the new plans also include establishing a buffer zone across the border on Ukrainian territory by February the 25th. The report notes that according to Moscow's earlier plans, enemy forces were to push out the armed forces of Ukraine by mid-October. While they failed to meet this deadline, they have achieved some tactical successes in the past few weeks. Currently, Moscow has gathered more than 40,000 troops for the operation to regain control over the Kursk region, according to RBC Ukraine. The situation is highly dynamic, with settlements changing hands within a single day. While Ukraine's defense has not collapsed, the chances of expanding its foothold in the Kursk appear relatively low, the report adds. Sources told RBC Ukraine that in August, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered his military to push Ukrainian forces out of the Kursk region by October the 1st, but also stressed the importance of not withdrawing troops from critical areas in the Donbass. In September, it was reported that Russia had concentrated 37,000 soldiers in the Kursk region and the Russian authorities had to set a new goal to oust Ukrainian forces by October the 15th.